General's office uh, weeks later and said, we just did an internal audit, which you might be interested in. And it turns out that there are 14 agencies in the United States doing job training right now. They're spending 17 billion, billion with a B, dollars with minimum results. So now we're going to have more job training. The reason is the federal government is mostly incapable because of the bureaucracy of doing things right. But there was a time when the federal government did things right. A perfect example is FDR. We had this big government depression, and people talk against FDR, but he ran the entire depression in 1938 with 8% of the GNP. Right now we're spending 25%. That's because he had a small, lean machine. Harry Truman, when he did job training after World War II, he did it correctly. I, I received the GI Bill, and my first job as a reporter uh, was on the job training. It was a $50 a week job. The government paid 25 I never saw a government official. I never filled out a form. It was a little tiny thing the employer had. I signed my name, and, and they paid half my salary for a year, and suddenly I was a reporter. So that there used to be a very efficient federal government. It's been invaded by theorists, academicians, spendthrifts, congressmen who want to spend money. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, the job training, 48 different funding sources now exist in Washington for job training. Not one, 48. And the inspector general says the average person seeking job training wouldn't even know where to go because it's everywhere. Grand County, Utah. Good morning. Good morning. Say, I, I like your program, and I don't know why in the book you haven't mentioned probably the worst waste, worst boondoggle we got is the illegal criminal laws that are made by the 50 states and Judiciary Committee and the United States Congress. They're not made on the floor of the House and Senate. They're made by attorneys illegally, unconstitutionally, with a conflict of interest. And committee, half of the United States Congress is attorneys. Nobody mentions, they talk about the pay raises that the that the Congress got, and that's all you hear about. You don't hear about the administration's appointees all got that same pay raise. You don't hear about all the federal judges. Let me give an example. I was in the Colorado legislature, and I served with most of the people, uh, big end of the people at least, that have been in the last 20, 25 years, represented Colorado and Washington. The budget in Colorado was $2.6 million in 1965. 1980, it was over $60 million. At the same time, the patrol budget, the highway patrol budget, was $10 million, and it never got quite to 20. Nobody will print this, absolutely nobody. I've tried to for years, and I give it up. But the crookedest bastards in the United States are the attorneys in Washington. I tell you, uh, uh, an outraged citizen, and uh, you presume to be one, and there are many, should join two, one of two or both citizens' groups the uh, Citizens Committee Against Government Waste here in Washington and the National Taxpayers Union. They both put out uh, uh, leaflets, uh, material, newsletters, and they keep uh, fairly well abreast of, of the situation. Uh, not in the depth that I did, but, uh, but they do a very good job. And uh, that's what the people of America need. They need, if, if we're going to have a revolution, Jefferson said you need an occasional revolution. Uh, this should be a peaceful revolution. Uh, a velvet revolution, but the people have to become outraged enough. We got outraged against the Soviet, and we, we won. We have to get outraged against the next enemy, which is Washington, D.C. We've got to do what Jefferson wanted us to do, which was return much of the government to the people. And it's been taken away from us, and it's so far away, and it's so hidden that, that there's no way to know. Uh, I'll give you an, an example of the, uh, of, the way, of the way it's hidden. The, uh, uh, Bush, both uh, Carter and Reagan didn't like the idea of outside consultants, and they, they couldn't get anywhere. So finally, a form, they got, they got the agencies to fill out a form, is this a consultant or not a consultant? And then the Senate Governmental Affairs Committee added it up, and they, they had, agreed, they had uh, confessed to $200 million in consultants, which is a lot of money, but not backbreaking. So the Senate Governmental Affairs asked the General Account Office to do a real check. And they did a real check. It hasn't been published, but I got a copy. And it's $4.9 billion, not $200 million. So the government, and maybe this is a difficult thing to say, but the United States government very often lies. They lied to me. They lied to the people. And it's a hidden operation. And we know what's happening in the localities. There's probably 10% waste. We know what's happening in the state level, somewhat. There's probably 20% waste. We have no idea what's happening in Washington. And I estimate between 30 and 45% waste in the entire government. And that's, that's enough money to balance the budget and to make a tax, uh, a, a tax cut.
Martin Gross is a former editor of Book Digest magazine. He was also a syndicated columnist, and his column was called The Social Critic. It appeared in newspapers including the Los Angeles Times, Newsday, and Chicago Sun-Times. He's also the author of several other books, including The Brain Watchers, The Doctors, and The Psychological Society. Our next call comes from Wichita, Kansas. Go right ahead. Good morning. Good morning. I'm enjoying this. Uh, my uh, pet peeve has been a recent uh, viewing of the... Uh, Foreign Aid uh, Committee in the Congress, in which uh, they had some special people who did some research and found that uh, the special interests were representing, uh, well, this one was on Israel, where they were giving eight or nine hundred dollars per person for when man, woman, and child each year for the past, oh, I don't know how many years. And uh, yet uh, they, uh, the recommendations were that this shouldn't occur, and yet uh, they had enough special interest, and there's enough propaganda, which propaganda is nothing but more than lies, but repeated over and over, we begin to believe these things. But special interest in Congress have really stole from the taxpayer and through misrepresentation. The, in terms of foreign aid, it is my opinion that foreign aid was very necessary during the Cold War, because with that money, we, not that we bought allies, but we helped to support our allies in the fight against communism. Now that we've defeated communism, it is probably intelligent to start to reduce foreign aid and uh, phase it out over a long period of time. But as to congressmen, one very bad law uh, that we have in the United States is that ex-congressmen uh, 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 and half become lobbyists and stay in Washington are allowed on the floor of the Congress during a vote so that the lobbyists come to the door, uh, to the door of, the, uh, of the House when the vote starts, but the doorkeeper keeps them out. But the ex-congressmen who have a special card, a retiree card, they could either have been defeated or retired or whatever, they just walk right through with their arms around their buddy congressman and sit down with him while they're voting. And he's a lobbyist, a paid lobbyist. And he's registered with the House clerk as a lobbyist, one of 6,000. And about half the congressmen do that. Now, that's an obscene law to have an ex-representative walk onto the floor of the House or even be a lobbyist. Ex-congressmen should not be permitted to be lobbyists, nor ex-senators, nor even ex-federal employees. That's why we need term limits. We should have a term limit about six years. When they're finished, let them go home to Kansas City. They do too much harm here in Washington.